Welcome to Recovered Truths. My name is Greg Reeser, the pastor here at Crosswork Bible Church. Uh, we are currently meeting at the Holiday Inn Express Conference Room at 1000 Vandalay Drive here in Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, we're on the west side of Frankfort and we invite you to come join us in person. Uh, we start Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock and then we start with the service at 10.30. Uh, and, and if you do come, the only thing we ask is bring a pen, paper, and a King James Bible because we do work here. Uh, the work that we do here is we study. Uh, we study what the Scripture says, kind of like what we're doing here. Uh, the only difference is, is it's one-on-one -on -one here on the video and on the TV program where in, in, in person uh, you're still allowed to ask questions. Uh, we love questions. If I'm speaking and we're talking about something, if you have a question, ask your question. Uh, we love questions. We love, we, we love when people ask questions. And I, I specifically like it because it tells me a couple things. One, it tells me that you're paying attention. And two, it tells me that you care. And I know we've, we've been places where you're not allowed to go ask the pastor a question afterwards. And honestly, that's a, that's a shame. But um, I, love, I love questions. So even if you just want to come and, and ask questions, we'll do that. We'll spend an entire hour and a half period of time just answering questions if you have them. Uh, we've had folks here that's shown up before and we spent 45 minutes a answering two questions that they had uh, just to make sure that they knew and understand what the Bible actually says. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue on in Romans chapter 6. We're doing a little overview of the book of Romans, remember? And uh, we're up here in Romans chapter 6. The last message what we dealt with was getting into our identity of who we are in Christ. And really the basis of that identity is found here in Romans chapters 6, 7, and 8. Uh, we've talked about the fact that 1 through 5 deals with our justification in Romans chapters 1 through 5 and then Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8 he starts talking to us about our identity who we are in Christ because we're in Christ and so that's one of the reasons why we've stopped and just spent a whole bunch of time in Romans chapter 6 and it's not just you know we're not we're not against baptisms just to be against baptism uh, what we're what we're really after here is to make sure that we know and understand why this baptism here in Romans chapter 6 doesn't have to do with water and it has something to do with something far greater than that. Something that no man, that no um, thing can do for you. Um, there's no ordinance that can do this for you. There's no ceremony that can do what, what takes place here in Romans chapter 6. Uh, so, we're going to continue on. There's some things that I want to make sure that we, we talk about today. First of all, we, we, we dealt with in the last time, what did, it, what did it meant to be in Christ? Right? We talked about that the last time, and that was an important thing because that's the basis of our identity. If we don't know who we are in Christ, then our life, our Christian life will be a complete and total mess 100% of the time because we're going to try and go do things and be people that God's not having us do or be today. And our life will be a complete and total mess because we're going to try and do things in the flesh and the best part is, is Romans chapter 7 tells us that we're dead to that. In fact, what's, what's really interesting is Romans chapter 6 tells us that we're dead to sin. Right? We've, we've talked about that a little bit. And Romans chapter 7 tells us that we're dead to the law. Right? So that means that there's nothing you can do in and of yourself. There's no law that you can perform to gain favor with God. There's nothing that, that you know, the whole idea with the Old Testament, is you go back and you read that and you study that, and the nation of Israel tells God, if you give us a law, then we'll keep it. Well, he gives them a law. How'd they do with it? Not very well. Aren't you glad to know that you're dead to the law? All right. Romans chapter 8 comes along and, and tells us that we're dead to the flesh. You no longer have to follow after what the flesh wants. And the reason why is because you're dead to sin. And what the flesh wants is to sin. Because the flesh wants what it wants and it wants sin. It wants, it, it wants gratification. It wants instant gratification. 
That's what that stuff is. And what God does is He makes you dead to the flesh, dead to the law, and dead to sin. All right? That's part of who we are in Christ. We're dead to sin because we're in Christ. We're dead to the law because we're in Christ. We're dead to the flesh because we're in Christ. And if you don't know that, you're going to spend your entire life trying to find a way to become dead to sin when you already have it. You're going to try to be dead to the law when you're already dead. God has already declared it. You're going to try and be dead to the flesh. Try to not follow after what the flesh wants to do, but follow after what the Spirit wants to do. And God's going to say, all you have to do is just understand who you are in the Son and allow my Word to perform in and through you based on who, you, who I've made you in my Son. It comes from a knowledge of understanding how wonderful life is because we're in Christ. And if we don't know what it means to be in Christ. If we think some water ceremony gets us there, some thing that we do, then we're going to think, well, some thing will make me dead to sin. Some thing will make me dead to the law. Some thing will make me dead to the flesh. When God says, I've already performed those things, now go live like you're dead to sin. And what happens is, is sin, there's three things that takes place. You're freed from the penalty of sin the moment that you get saved. You're freed from the power of sin from this time on. And one day you're going to be freed from the presence of sin. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. In fact, one of the things Paul does is he mentions things twice. So I'm going to do it again. You're saved from the what? The, 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 the power of sin, you're saved from the presence of sin, and you're saved from the penalty of sin. The moment that you get saved, God says, you're no longer under the penalty of sin. And as you walk and live according to God's Word, right, the divided, you're going to be saved from the power of sin. Sin no longer has dominion over you, and we find that out in Romans chapter 6. And how do you deal with sin? How does a how does a believer deal with sin? Well, I just I just if I see something that I do, I just go ask forgiveness. You've already got it. Well, don't ask for it. What do you do with sin? How do you deal with sin in your life? Knowing one day we're going to be saved from the presence of sin. There's not even going to be sin around us. That's a wonderful day to look forward to. And there is a way to deal with sin today in your life. And what grace does, we talked about it before, Romans chapter 6 starts off and says, What shall we say then? Shall we sin that grace may abound? God's answer is what? God forbid. Why? Because what? We're dead to sin. Don't you know that you're dead to sin? You don't have to sin anymore. And that's where we pick up in Romans chapter 6 here. But there's some things that we want to make sure that we know. There's three things that we're going to cover here in Romans chapter 6. The first is know. The second is reckon. And the third is yield. Alright? Know, reckon, yield. That's the issue. So those three things, we're going to take a look at those three things. Obviously not in this TV program because we've got a, a limited amount of time. But I want you to notice, just go through and read Romans chapter 6 one day with those things in mind and, and think about them. Continue. Let's go through here. Let's just read through here a little bit. Notice, Romans chapter 6 We'll start off here in verse 5, right? So we've already gone through and we found out that the baptism in, in chapters 6, verse 2, 3, and 4 there uh, isn't about that water baptism, but a spiritual baptism that takes place the moment that you get saved. And here's, here's what happens. Verse 5, 4. If we have been planted together in the likeness of His death. Question. Have we been planted in the likeness of His death? The answer is Yes. So then, there, there's this thing with conditional statements. You've got an if-then statement. If you have a condition, then you have the conclusion. So if the condition is met, then the conclusion is true. Notice what happens here. 
If we've been planted together in the likeness of His death, that's the condition. It's already been met. We read that in the first three verses, or verse 2, 3, and 4. Notice, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying because we have this what? This, 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 the, the fact that we've been planted together in the likeness of His death... That's the condition because it's already been met. What's he say? We shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Now you stop and you think about that real quick. Paul tells us what? That one day that we're going to shed this earthly body and we're going to be put on and clothed upon with what? A body fashioned like unto His glorious body. Because we're in Christ and we know some things. We know that we are dead with Christ. That's what he says as you go down through there in verse 3. Know ye not. He says, we know some things. Don't you know? We should know this. Continue on. Verse 6. Notice again. Knowing this. There's something that we need to know. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. What's something that we need to know? We need to know that our old man is what? Crucified. Not just crucified, but notice. Is crucified. Notice those next two words. With him. By the way, it's crucified, past tense, with him. We talked about this before. The, the, the baptism, the spiritual baptism that we go through, the moment that we get saved, what it does is it takes us and places us in the living union with Christ. So much so that His death is our death. His burial is our burial. His resurrection is our resurrection. And that's a wonderful truth that if you get a hold of that, Grace allows you to look at sin in your life and deal with it the proper way. Notice, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Why? That the body of sin might be destroyed. What do we know about this body of sin? It will be destroyed one day and it's going to be replaced with what? A body fashioned like unto his glorious body. Notice, what does he say there? Because we have this, knowing that our old man is crucified with him, what takes place, he says, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Notice that. Here's the conclusion of it. That henceforth, right? So everybody says, well, I can't understand the King James Bible. Well, all we need to do is go look up the Word and we find out what it means. You know what henceforth means? From this time forward... From this time forward, notice, we should not serve sin. Do you know what? We know that our old man is crucified with him, so what do we also know is we should what? Should not serve sin. You know what that tells you? Hey, that thing that puts Christ on the cross two, almost 2,000 years ago is a thing that I no longer have to serve. I have a choice in the matter. You have a choice in the matter. We can look at some, some sin that's in our life that's getting ready to take place. By the way, if you study it out, you know, and this gets into a whole other thing, but the sin, when, when, you, when you do it, Whatever sin it is. That's not when the sin started. When you do it, that's the culmination of when the sin actually took place in your mind. Now, that'll make you think. So, if I go out here and I do something that's some sort of sin... When I do the action, that's not when it becomes sin. It became sin back there when I thought about doing it, and then I made a way to make it happen. You know, that completely changes your idea of sin, doesn't it? Because we always think of we always think of the Catholic version, right? Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Well, what's your sins? Well, you know, this, this, and this. Well, the thing is, is we never think about the sins that we thought about doing that didn't actually come to pass. The ones that we thought about doing are ones we also have committed to, even though we've not done it. Do you know why? You know why when Jesus Christ shows up and He says, you've, you've, heard, it, you've heard it said, 
that if a man commits adultery, he says what? If, he's, if he looks upon a woman with lust, he's committed adultery in his heart already. When you think about it, that sin's already taken place before it. it the, he, and he makes it a, a bigger issue than most people want it to be. You know, you take a look at sin out there in the world, and you say, well, this person, look at that, they're committing sin. And you're, you're doing far worse in your mind. I guarantee it. The reason I know is because I've been there myself. I know things in my head that I've done in my head in the past and I didn't complete them, but they were all still sin. You know why I know that you've done the same thing? Because we're all the same. The only difference is, is I already know that mine's taken to the cross and dealt with. So that relieves me of the fear and the shame and the, 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 all that other stuff and the anxiety of, of those things because I already know that they're there at the cross. He, he's already paid for them and has already forgiven me for them for the ones that I've not even talked about. I don't even have to talk about them. I'm already forgetting about them. But what this does, what grace does, is allows you to what? Not serve sin. That word should means you've got, an act, you've, got, you've, got, you've got a choice to make. He says that henceforth, from this time forward, we should not serve sin. Why? Verse 7, For he that is dead, dead to sin, is what? Freed from sin. Do you know? We, we, <clears throat> we drew the circles, right? Spirit, soul, and body. You know that when you're freed you're dead to sin it means you're freed from sin that means you don't have to sin now and when you do it's your flesh that's doing it and what what grace does is allows you to deal with the sin the right way by saying it's already at the cross he's already forgiven me of it now when you realize that, it's no longer grace, it's no longer a license of sin as most people think. But what it is, is it puts you, in, in, it puts you on the spot and puts you in your place. And says, that thing right there that you just thought about doing is what put Christ on the cross. And do you know what you get to do from that point on? You get to say, you know what? I'm dead to sin and I'm free from it. I don't have to do that thing. Notice in verse 8, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Notice in verse 9, here's this word again, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over Him. By the way, what is the wages of sin? Death. Romans 6.23 tells us that a little bit later on. The wages of sin is death. Do you know what sin produces in your life? Is death. Here's the best part. If you're dead to sin, and you're going to be just like Christ, and you die no more, then what's that mean about sin in your life? It doesn't kill you anymore. Notice, that's what he says. Knowing that, that, that Christ hath raised from the dead. By the way, His death's now our death. Right? If he's, uh, if we, uh, if if Christ be raised from the dead, his death's our death, his burial's our burial, his resurrection's our resurrection. If we have those things, notice, if that that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, can can Christ go and die again? No. So what's that tell you about you and I? Can sin? control you anymore no you are freed you are saved from the what penalty of sin the moment you get saved and in your life right now today every single day of your life you are freed from the power of sin because it has no more power over you notice he says death hath no more dominion over him Christ, and since His death, His burial, and resurrection is ours, then it has no more dominion over us as well.
That's, a, that's an amazing doctrine that you need to get a hold of. Because instead of trying to figure out, what am I supposed to do about this? I need to go and ask God to forgive me. Pastor, what do I do? How many, how many things do I need to do? What do I need to do? How many places do I need to go? Who do I need to give money to? Who do I need to give fo- food to? What do I need to do? Do I need to get baptized again? Do I need to get this? Do I need to get that? Just get off that roller coaster. Get off that treadmill and get in grace. And when you understand that death hath no more dominion over him, and it's also true for us, notice, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Here's the next word, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. That's this reckon. No... No means you have some knowledge of it. Now, you now know what these verses say because I've told you. You may have never read those verses before. But if you're watching and you've gone through those verses with us, you now know the information. The next part is in verse 11, he says, Likewise, in the same manner, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. Indeed, unto sin. You know what he says? You know what reckon means? Take what you know and count it to be true for yourself. So then, if I ask you a question, have you ever trusted in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Yes. I know I'm going to heaven because of who I am in Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, Are you dead to sin? Well, I don't know. I just, no, that's not what the verse says. It doesn't say anything. There's no, there's no escape clause out of that. What's it say? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you know what he's saying? Count it to be true for yourself. The victory that Jesus Christ has over sin and death and the grave is the same victory that you and I have because we're in Him, not by some water ceremony, but because of what God did in the first three verse, first verse, first four verses of Romans chapter six. So then you look at that and say, "I don't know if I can believe that verse." Well, by faith you believe the verse. You reckon it to be true for yourself. When God says, <clears throat> "When God says you're free from sin," you have a choice. Do you believe the verse or not? That's the choice. Do you believe that you're free from sin? Yes or no? The verse says that you are. So if you say no, then you're not believing the verse. That's not faith. Paul tells us a little bit later on in Romans, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. By the way, you've already been forgiven of that one too. If you're saved. Now, I realize there might be some folks that are watching this that aren't saved. None of these things that we've talked about for you is true if you're not saved. The only people that have this are those that are saved. Those who by their own free will and volition have taken and placed their faith in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to do what He did on the cross. There's nothing that we can do in and of ourselves to be able to be made accepted in in the Beloved. God made us accepted in Christ Jesus. And the only way that you find that out is if you rightly divide the word of truth. That's why that verse is so important. That's why it's so important to understand Romans through Philemon is written specifically to and about you. Because if you don't read that, then you're going to go read another verse that tells you you have to do something in order to get forgiveness. He says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be, de- uh, to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Notice in verse 12, here's, here's the big issue. Let not, 
So that means you've got a choice. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. Alright, so I want you to stop and think about that real quick. And I know we're getting low on time. <clears throat> but notice, he says, therefore, because of who you are in Christ, because your old man is crucified, because you're not, you're, you should not serve sin, he says, what? Therefore, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't take this body and say, you know what? I'm saved by grace, so I'm going to go do whatever I want to. People who say that stuff do not understand grace. I've read books by guys who say uh, cheap grace. Yeah, it was cheap for me. It wasn't cheap for Jesus Christ. He gave His life. That's an expensive grace. And just because you don't understand it, don't go and try to put other people down. The verse tells us how expensive that grace is. It cost Him His life. It cost Him His blood. And through that, He's going to set us completely and totally free from sin. And I can't wait to tell you a little bit more about that. And we're going to have to do that next time. <clears throat> but I do want to mention again, this booklet, the Dictionary of the Gospel. This is absolutely free of charge. I want to have this in every home I possibly can in Frankfurt because this book, along with understanding your Bible, will help set you free from the religious tyranny that you find yourself in every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. For those who don't go to church or anywhere, um, come on down and let's talk about your salvation and then we'll get you into the Bible and tell you who you are in Christ. This little booklet, absolutely free. Contact us, uh, the email or phone number there on the screen. Contact us and we'll get it to you absolutely free of charge. As I said the last time, I don't want any money for it. <clears throat> in fact, if you send us a check or something, I'll send it back to you. Because <laughs> I want you to have this absolutely free. So, I want to thank you for joining us today. And until next time, grace and peace.